Ezekiel 22. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Now, thou son of man, wilt thou judge? And you can hear somebody in the background, Judge not, you should be judged. <laughs> so when, when somebody says, Well, you're not supposed to judge. God told Ezekiel, judge. We are told to judge ourselves. We're, we're told as Christians we can judge things. I mean, you can proclaim to be a Christian, but if your life doesn't live Christ-like, I can judge you as lost. Now, I can't judge you personally. I don't know. But wilt thou judge the bloody city, and that would be Jerusalem, and the people that are in it? Listen, Jerusalem didn't kill anybody, the people in it. I judge America by the sins that the people commit. And Christians think, oh, how great and wonderful a country we are. You mean legalize abortion? You mean legalize, show on the screen, adultery? You mean keep those who have murdered other people, keep them alive and give them meals and take care of them? Yea, thou shalt show her all her abominations. For all right, we see murder. Then shalt thou say, thus saith the Lord God. The city that shed his blood in the midst of it murder that her time may come now you can say well you know we're under the law and blah 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 but was Cain and Abel under the law when God spoke to Cain and says I hear your blood your brother's blood Was Mount Ararat under the law, under Jerusalem, when God told Noah, any man that sheds blood, any animal that sheds blood, his blood shall be shed? Is not the Apostle Paul himself said, if I have committed a crime of capital offense, I refuse not to die. I don't know how many cities, but I know all 50 states of the United States of America, all 50 states have people in them states that murdered somebody and they're still alive and they've been counted by a jury, by a judge, guilty. And they're still living. And maketh idols. Let's add idols to it against herself to defile herself. Idols. You mean the four faces of Mount Rushmore. Let's go see Old Faithful make pictures and take pictures. Let's go see the big Abraham statue in Washington, D.C. Let's see the big penis. I mean, the obelisk in Washington, D.C. Let's go to uh, city parks and see, uh, you know, commanders and, and rulers and generals and Lee and, and all of them. We are a country of murderers and we are a country of idolaters and take the United States flag, you, you, you treat that flag better than you treat your King James Bible. And a lot of Baptist churches don't even have the King James Bible, but they got American flag. You read the rules about the American flag, how you cannot do that to the American flag, but you can take a King James Bible and throw it in the garbage can and no one will care. You can't let the American flag touch the ground. How many Bibles I've seen on top of rooftops and hoods of cars as they leave the church parking lot go skinning across the road. Thou art become guilty in thy blood murder that thou hast shed. Thou hast defiled thyself in thine idols. Which thou hast made, made in America. 
I'm proud to be American, proud to make these products, proud to make plastic and wood and metal junk. Thou has caused thy days to draw near. It's coming closer. It's coming. Judgment is coming for Jerusalem. And thou art come even unto thy years. <laughs> Therefore have I made thee a reproach unto the heathen, the Gentiles, and a mocking of all countries. You know there are people that mock America. They think everybody loves America. Well, look at all the people that are flocking to America, leaving their countries to come to America. Free, free welfare, free health care, free food, free food, free education. No wonder they're flocking to America. It's free. Well, the taxpayers pay for it. God will judge it all. Those that be near and those that be far from thee shall mock thee. You know, there's a lot of Jewish jokes. You can find books on Jewish jokes. You can find books on Polish jokes. The Polish ones are the best. I know I'm Polish. There's mocking. And a mocking is not really necessarily a joke. Oh, come on. I thought you had the, the, the greatest God. I thought God was your light. I thought God would protect you. I thought God would give you this land. What are you doing in Babylon? What are you doing destroyed? And they're mocking God. Through their sins. Not God's sin. Which thou art infamous and much vexed. Jerusalem's still around. But she ain't the city that God wants her to be. Not with the Catholics, the Muslims, the heathen, and the Arabians running around in it. Behold, the princes of Israel, every one were in thee, the city, to their power to shed blood. And even Jesus said about Jerusalem, you, you slain the prophets. He told the Pharisees, your father had murdered the, the prophets and mur murdered the people, and you garnished the, the scepter. You make it look pretty. And they have I set light by father and mother. And that means they are, the set light is to tell on. Nine one one. what's your emergency? My mom slapped me. My dad won't let me have my cell phone. You know, Jesus came, he said, I'll set the, the mother against the daughter and the son against the father. And when it comes to the days of the Antichrist and tribulation period, they're going to turn their parents in. And the parents are going to turn their children in. We had several years ago a big trial where a, a child took his parents to court to divorce his parents from his life. In the midst of thee have they dwelt by oppression with a stranger. You know, God said, you know, you're not to treat that stranger wrong. Okay, he's a Gentile and all that. You know, Peter, when he said about Cornelius, you know, it's not, it's not rightful for us to be with you. You know, where does that say, Peter? <laughs> God said in the law, the, the, the stranger, hey, if they want to serve me and they want to do right, they're allowed to live amongst you. They're allowed to do. God didn't turn that Ethiopian and Eunuch away. He saved him. 
But the Jews have gotten to the point. You see what my mom's doing? You see what my dad's doing? Oh, there's a Gentile. Disrespect him. Don't give him any, any, any advantage. Indeed, they have vexed the fatherless. The, the, the children, they have no father. Oh, well, you know, he's not going to be able to defend himself. We can take a man show. You know, uh, dad made a will, but, you know, we'll override the will because we got the powers turned and they don't have enough money to fight. Well, well, and the widow. It's come such a point in, in Jerusalem that people are being screwed with. They're not getting fair justice. They're not getting right. They are getting wrong. And listen, man, that's America. Where the criminal or the accused criminal has more rights than the victim. And the criminal would have the right to get up on the trial and say, I plead the fifth. I don't have to say nothing. Man, in my estimation, if you're going to plead the fifth, you're announced you're guilty. Because if I'm not guilty, I'm, hey, listen, I'll tell you everything. I'll even tell you things you don't want to know. And there are people going before the courts and going before the king. Help me, help me. I, I, they're, they're, they're taking advantage of me. Yeah, so what? You better realize one day at the judgment, either the judgment seat of Christ or the great white throne judgment, your Republicans and your Democrats are going to stand before God and you're going to find out that they took kickbacks, they took money from big corporations and all the buyouts and all the bribery. Thou hast despised my holy things. That's the stuff in the temple. You realize in the temple there were, there were idolatry. They were they were worshiping the stars and their horoscope, and they were it was just polluted. And there are sometimes in 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 the king that they needed money, and the Bible says they would scrape the gold off the doors of the temple. All right, here, use this to pay for the debt. There was a king that put his own altar in there and he, and he moved God's altar over and he took down the basis of, of the labor and just threw it on the ground, on the pavement. And has profaned my Sabbath. And they were doing that in Nehemiah's time. There is a complete violation of the Jews of the law that God gave them. And it's written down in the books of Moses. So they can't say, well, we didn't know. They were cleaning out the temple one day and then they found the book of the law. Well, why was it hidden? Did not the law prescribe every single king was to take the law and prescribe their own writing of the law, their own king's copy of the law? You realize that no king is ever recorded to do that. But if the, if the king did what the law said, he would have a king's copy of the law, the king's copy of the law, the king's copy of the law. He wouldn't have an NIV law. He wouldn't have an RSV law. He would have a king's copy, King James 611. Where there's word of a king, there's power. Nothing of scholars. In thee are men that carry tales to shed blood. You mean all the television programs about violence and murder? Crime stories and the books and the movies? The detective, there's a murdered body in the house. Let us tell the story. That's America. That's your Hollywood. That's your that's your news. Hey, we got a guy who was killed over here in the streets. That's your that's your, you know your top ten book list. Someone was murdered. Put it on the screen. Make a movie. Make a television program. Put the detective in charge. No, 
nothing new under the sun, America. That's why I tell you with America needs to read Jeremiah and they need to read Ezekiel because there's America and Jerusalem fell and so will America. And indeed they eat upon the mountains. We've already learned that's the idolatry, that it's the gods. In the midst of the Jerusalem, they commit lewdness. If you can't say that's America, you know, I don't know what you're going to say. Unlawful indulgence of lust, fornication, and adultery. That's your movie theaters. In America. In scripture, it generally denotes idolatry. That's your religion. That's your Baptist Catholic churches. Don't kick my Christmas tree. I love my Christmas tree. Oh, Christmas tree. Oh, Christmas tree. If I don't water thee, you'll burn down. And all my stuff I got on Black Friday. Now your fornication, your adultery could be the crap you buy. Because you got to have it. You want it. Paul says lust is coveting. Romans 7, 7, coveting is lust. That violates the law. Well, you know, we're not under the law. And why did Paul say, why did Paul quote the Ten Commandments? Why did Jesus quote the Ten Commandments? Friend, I'm not only reading about Jerusalem, I'm reading about America. And, and, and you Baptist Catholics out there are going to get upset with me. I don't care. Join in line. First ones of my family. The first ones I ticked off was my family. The next one I ticked off was, was Victory Bible Baptist Church. You want their names? You want the preacher's names I've ticked off and the Christian names I've ticked off? There's a long list. Because I'm going to speak the truth, I'm going to stand for the truth, and I am going to have the convictions God's given me, and too bad you don't have them. Too bad you'll have burning wood, hay, and stubble. I won't. On the conviction. I'm not saying I'm going to be without wood, hay, and stubble. Because I will have wood, hay, and stubble, but, you know, if I'm trying to help you out, America is an idol. America is, is adultery and fornication of your Baptist Catholics because there's nothing better than America. Not for me. Nothing better than New Jerusalem. In thee have they discovered their father's nakedness. That was happening in the Corinthian church. In the New Testament, Paul writes, a man was having his, his father's wife. And they had they humbled her that was set apart for pollution. Now, either she was had her time in a month, Or she had given herself to idols or Mary or maybe said it for none in the pollution idolatry. She is no longer given herself to God. A Jezebel. There are women today in the world that give themselves for their own gratification. Their own pleasure. And only for them. And one has committed abomination with his neighbor's wife. Adultery. It used to be a, a crime in America for adultery. And you would have to go to jail. No longer. It's in the law books. It ain't followed no more. Another has lewdly 
That's that lewdness, fornication, adultery, defiled his daughter-in-law. He's taken his son's wife. Another has humbled his sister. Don't we call people in, our, in church fellowship, don't we call them brothers and sisters? You know how many pastors I know ran off with a sister in the church, the piano player? I know a church where a man committed adultery, open, outright adultery, messed up his wife and his children. And yeah, we had that letter, we're going to deterch him and all this and that. And the next day I saw that pastor's car at the guy's garage. Uh-huh. He didn't go to the wife that was a victim. He didn't go to the children that were victims. There are women who we call sisters in the church. They are sisters in the Lord, and they have been humbled by another brother in the Lord that ought not to be. And then physical brothers and sisters. You know, this is the history of, of Israel. Did not David's son attack his sister Tamar? His father's daughter. That was Abraham and Sarah. Sarah was Abraham's sister, but not uh, not by his mother. But... So he didn't lie when well, he told me my sister. He told a half truth. Friend, that was happening in the Corinthian church. In thee. Have they taken gifts to shed blood, a ransom, blood money, a hitman? That runs around in America. That's another one of your crime stories, the mafia. We ain't reading Old Testament. We're reading current events and history. And if God destroyed his people and his city, you better believe he's going to get the Gentiles and the heathen and the Christians. <laughs> and now has taken usury and increase. That was forbidden for Jews to charge another Jew interest. Now the law said the Jew could charge the, the Gentile interest, but they were not to charge each other interest. And again, they're violating the law. You want $100? Okay, on that $100, we'll give you 2.3%. Now, I'm not saying that's illegal today for your credit cards or not, because we're not Jews. <laughs> but if there are Jews out there who are living under the law, not under the grace of the blood of Jesus Christ, and you are charging your fellow Jew, and we keep the law, you don't go to Jerusalem three times a year. And thou hast greedily gained of thy neighbors by extortion. Eminent domain. I've seen I've seen eminent domain in New London, Connecticut, where I grew up as a little boy. I can see the government taking. Uh, I got four houses right now that are in my head that I remember growing up and passing by walking. And those houses and that property was taken by eminent domain. And I know two people that fought that thing and lost their battle. Not only lost their money, but lost their house. And I go, I go back there, you go back there today. Nothing happened to that property that they had ideas for. And has forgotten me. America doesn't know who God is. Let me ask you a question about this Christmas thing. Let, let me throw that out there. I've already got you angry enough. If Christmas is of God and Jesus said, Marvel not the world hate me. 
Why do the atheists, why does the public school system, why do all religions, why does everybody celebrate the Christmas of Jesus that they're supposed to hate? Why do all the stores have Christmas? They're supposed to hate Jesus according to the scriptures. That's another reason why I don't believe Christmas is Christian, because those that are supposed to hate Christmas don't hate it. Now, you want to know something that people will hate? Get on the street corner and preach Jesus Christ, and I'll show you how much they love Jesus. I can tell you in a city full of crime, the police will come and send three or four police officers because a man stands up and says, Jesus saves! And the police officer says, you know, we got other crimes we could be handling right now, and me, why don't you go handle them? <laughs> There's no crime going on right now. Behold, therefore, I have smitten thy hand at thy dishonest gain. They're, they're earning money they don't deserve. <laughs> you want to see that in action? You watch your tell true, not not pretend, not made up. You watch your true television court dramas, true ones, the true ones. And see how many people bring up their case against a person that sold them a, a junky car, against a person who's rented them an apartment house, somebody who's did a dishonest gain. And that's only the fragment of all the dishonest gain that goes on in the world today. Which thou hast made. And that thy blood, which has been in the midst of thee, murder, that keeps coming up. Can thy heart endure? Can thy hands be strong? You know, that, that guy who, who blew up the, the, the people at the marathon with, with the crockpot. We are Boston strong. And now we are Orlando strong. We are this country strong. Where did you get that statement from? You got it from the Bible. And you're not getting strong. You're getting broken down. You're getting weaker. <laughs> In the days that I shall deal with thee. <laughs> if God dealt with Jerusalem, he's going to deal with thee. I, the Lord, has spoken it. And look at that. I will do it. Jesus says, I'm coming back. He's coming back. He's coming back in the Lion tribe of Judah. He's going to be angry. He won't be wearing a birthday hat. He'll be wearing crowns. There'll be many Christians behind them all sad because they lost out. Because they didn't get the truth. And they didn't hold to the truth. I will scatter them among the heathen. He has and he done. He will. And disperse thee in the countries there in America. And will consume thy filthiness out of thee. And thou shalt take thine inheritance in thyself in the sight of the heathen. And thou shalt know, there it is again, I am the Lord. <laughs> 